This episode of Spectre Sound Studios is brought to you by Palmer. All opinions are my own. So this is a Palmer Studio Mon 5. I got the other one on a stand off camera and I've been working with these for the last couple days. And I gotta say, I'm very impressed for what they are and for the price point. These are going for 199 bucks each over at B&H and they're 60 watts and they really deliver the goods, not only in terms of headroom and volume, but in terms of bass response as well. I'm kind of shocked actually that they're managing to get so much bass out of these little guys, but that's thanks to this rear firing port here. Now this is bi -amped. it's 30 watts power for the bottom and the top each, so 60 watts in total. And these are self-powered monitors, meaning you are not going to need to go out and buy a separate power amp. You can just hook these up to the back end of your sound card or your interface or whatnot and use that as your volume knob and you're good to go. Connections are XLR and quarter inch and there's volume knob, but there's no additional EQ tweaks. There's no shelving controls or anything like that. What you see is what you get. And what you get is pretty damn impressive considering the price and the small footprint. Now don't be put off by the five inch woofers. I've heard some mixes done by some friends of mine who mix on five inch speakers and they get spectacular results. So why don't we put these to the test? Let's throw them up on the stands. We'll go over to the other camera at the desk and let's finish a mix using the Studio Mon 5s from Palmer. Okay, so we moved over to the desktop here and I've got the Palmers set up just off camera. You can't really see them from this angle, but yes, they are here. This is an absolute no-brainer to set up. I've just got them set up to the output of my Focusrite and I've got the volumes cranked on the back. There's no dip switches. There's no configuration or whatnot. Uh, what you see is what you get. Just crank them on, turn them up all the way, and away you go, and then control the volume with the output of your sound card. I gotta say, yeah, I'm pretty impressed with the insane amount of bass coming out of these little bastards. Not too bad at all. Now, they do kick out 60 watts, and let me crank this up a little more. Let's see what we get. Yeah, that's definitely loud enough to damage your hearing if you're going to mix at that kind of volume level all day. So I wouldn't recommend it. The nice thing is with that kind of power, you've got headroom so you can hear transients and really get an idea what's going on in your mixes. And that's the thing. As soon as I threw these up on this mix, I did this mix on the, you know, the angle iron ball, the little guy there, um, a few months back. And I'm just sat in the mix and I'm like, I've been playing with the snare sound for like the last half hour. I'm like, oh, this is letting me hear things a little bit differently, which is great. Now, like I said, these have an insane amount of bass but i can't put them up in the soffits because they have a rear firing port so if i were to put them in the in the soffits um all the bass would go into the back and i wouldn't hear anything um that's why i like having front mounted ports for any uh speakers i'm gonna put my soffits but they seem to be doing just fine on the speakers here once again they're allowing me to hear a level of detail i wasn't hearing before in this mix which is really cool. I was not expecting that. I got to say, you know, for a Discord mod, Jason Constantine, he mixes on a set of five-inch monitors and gets absolutely stunning results with that. So um, I can definitely see the appeal to that. Sometimes working on the little monitors uh, can definitely help you in terms of translation into the real world. So I'm just going to kind of run through this mix and maybe rebalance a couple of things, make sure I've got things set where I want before I print the mix. Let's take a look here. Yeah, the big issue with this one was the bottom snare mic was just, you know, was just really, you know, super loud. So it doesn't need to be a lot here. Crank this on. Got top snare mic, bottom snare mic. So that, there's a nice crack to it, but I just want to hear a little bit of that splat coming off the bottom. You know, so we can get those snare wires, give it a bit more air. And uh, pretty good right there. Let's just uh, mute, up the, mute up the bass, mute up the guitars, and I want to hear what's going on here. Some nice, some nice breathiness going on there. Actually, um, oh, that's going to my, <laughs> let's go post fader there. Sorry, I was, I'm doing a send from the room mics into the drum reverb, and I just don't want it to get overpowering here. So I just want this kind of... Want a nice kind of airy sna snare sound, but that's going to be coming mostly from the room mics and not the close mics. I got a bit going on here. If I were to turn that up here. I 
Actually, that's kind of nice. You know, I've heard from some guys way higher up, like, don't send your close mics to your reverb user room mics. But in this case, I'm liking the thump it's giving me. That's kind of neat. You guys are wondering what that is. That's I've got a lot of outboard going on. You have that little volume surge of stuff going out to some outboard compressors, and I'm hearing it back before the compressors have a chance to clam down and do their job. Now that really fattens things up. That's kind of neat. I wasn't expecting that. If I were to mute out that reverb. And just a little bit of room mic here. I'm going to tweak that tom as well, so I'm going to do that in a minute here. On those room mics, I got a pair of Stem 1176s down there that are just absolutely incredible. Um, that's what they... Uh, that's what they sound like by themselves. That's with some compression. And I've got drum leveler actually bouncing that uh, that room mic up and down here by about 10 dBs. It's working as kind of a gate, and it's just hitting on the snare impact. So it's just giving us a little bit more oomph on the snare hits, which is pretty neat. Turn that off. Nice. Pretty damn cool. I just want to change... Always check your face, kids. Make sure your mics are working together because that's a big thing. I think what, that's pretty good right there. I like the kick sound I'm getting. I like how everything's kind of working here. Going to check my parallel bus. Got an 1176 over here. Or No, I'm sorry. That's an SSL bus compressor. An S, I, excuse me, an S-type bus compressor from IGS. I've had this for years. Um, I use it as a crush mic on, on drums. It does the trick. Just to add some extra nastiness there. That's an effect mic or an effect compressor. So with it, bring that up in parallel. That's super cool. Really got to fix that, Tom. want a bit more bottom on end on that snare and dial that in using a trident 50b over here um fantastic eqs i really got to finish doing an episode on those things one of these days i think that'll be right about there that works just we'll dial in a little bit of bass Got a whole bunch going on of guitar stuff going on there. Got some 57s, got some toll mics going on. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, turn off the blocker for a minute here. 57. Toll mic. Yeah, they work really well together. And we got Grindstein going on as well. Ah, it sounds lovely, doesn't it? That's one of these guys. You blend blend that in though with the big mics, and it's like, damn. Take it out, and it's like, what's missing? Add that back in. That's all kind of nasty goodness there. Yeah, we gotta put the cock blocker back in. Somebody who recorded this didn't have a clean DI signal, it was picking up all kinds of monitor noise and whatnot. You can really hear that. That's why we have the cock blocker plug in. Hey, again, you can just hear the compressors just jump on. We just took my bus compressor back here. Using the Heritage Audio Successor on the two bus right now, it's working amazing. But I like I said, I gotta love, I really absolutely love what's going on here. 
in terms of being able to hear what's going on. Just checking my levels here, make sure everything's going out the compressors right. And of course, running ozone, just gonna check my level. Take a bit of mids out of that snare. Yep, okay. Sometimes I gotta check and see if I'm hitting the right right area there. Normal, I like snares a little bit fatter sounding like this, but uh, this is what I got from the drummer. It was a little bit tuned up higher than I usually care for, but hey, you know what? It seems to be doing the job. So. Maybe I can take the guitar down just a bit. Really like how that kick's sitting though. Yeah, right there. Snare's got a nice flap. Actually bring the verb down a bit. Do that one more time, just in that slow section. But I mean, like, that's the great thing about real drumming there is, you know, when the drummer slows down and he's on the ride and he's winding up on the snare, you can definitely hear quite a bit of change in how it's being hit from the faster section. He's doing a crossover thing, he can't get his hand up high, as high. And we're here. Pretty cool, pretty cool effect, and it definitely actually kind of drives the song along. Um, I'm just wondering if I'm hitting that crush bus just a little too much there. Let me back that off a touch. There we go. Just checking for a hi-hat bleed there, making sure we're getting the hi-hat from the actual overheads and not just the snare mic. That's something I'm always watching. All right. Let's bring that snare down a touch. I think we're good right there. So that's the Palmer Studio Mon 5s. You can get them over at B&H Photo Video for only $199 each. Uh, as a set of entry-level monitors, i got to say I'm very impressed with the amount of bottom end these things deliver. I think Palmer's got something really cool here. I'm very impressed with the overall transparent sound I'm getting with these. There's a lot of good transient detail on here, and it really does let me kind of listen in closely in on the mix. So for $400 bucks for a pair, i got to say that's a hell of a deal. I love checking out good, cheap gear. This would definitely fall well within that category. And if you're looking for your first set of studio monitors, a Palmer might have just the thing you're looking for.